God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Hello everybody, a very warm welcome to the Canal Side Churches for this service for the Sunday before Lent. I'm the Reverend John Rees and I'm Rector of these churches which serve the villages of Hilperton, Staverton, Semington and Wadden near Trowbridge in Wiltshire. And whether you're watching locally or fur from further away, you're very welcome. And I'm being joined in leading this service by my wife Anne, who's a lay worship leader, and by our curate, the Reverend Joy Olbow, and others are going to be sharing in, in leading our readings. Today we are thinking about Jesus' transfiguration, of how he became dazzlingly white on the mountain, how his whole appearance changed. We're thinking about the, the majesty and the mystery of God, but also how God loves us so much and how God longs for us to be transformed and made more like him too. That theme of love, of course, is also very important as today is also Valentine's Day. And we're going to continue now with a call to worship. God touches the world. And the world changes. God touches us. And we are transformed. In the brightest of day. In the deepest of night. On the mountain. In the valley. Everywhere. In this time together, we invite God to open our eyes to the transformation of our lives. And through the change, we worship God. Alleluia. I wonder what things in the world around you make you exclaim, Oh, wow! How about a beautiful sunset like this one on the canal? Or an alpine scene like this? What about these awesome northern lights? Or snowdrops coming up in our gardens and parks and countryside early in the year. There are many things in our world that are so beautiful, grand or powerful, that we can't help but exclaim, oh wow! One day, three of Jesus' disciples experienced an oh wow moment. We'll hear about this later in our service. Now we're going to sing our first hymn, The Splendour of the King, How Great is Our God. Rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God! Again. 
beginning and the end. The God had three in one. Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great! say sorry to God for those things we have done that we shouldn't have done, those things we haven't done that perhaps we should have done. Father, thank you for calling us into your family where we belong to one another and to you. We are sorry when we haven't loved each other. Father, forgive us and help us to change. We are sorry when we have failed to use our gifts to serve you. Father, forgive us and help us to change. We are sorry when we haven't been prayerful. Father, forgive us and help us to change. We are sorry when we have put ourselves first. Father, forgive us and help us to change. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so when we confess our sins, our wrongdoing, we are assured that we are forgiven in Jesus' name. So let's invite the Holy Spirit to come and help us change so that we can be the people God wants us to be. And do join in this prayer and you'll see the words on the screen. Holy Spirit of God, please come and fill us afresh with your life. Change us and mould us so that we might bring you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now our collect or special prayer for today. Have pity, Father, on us, your estranged and willful children. Grant that we may know the things we ought to do and have the grace to do them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. And we're now going to have our readings Joy is going to read our Old Testament reading, following which the Shellam family will read the account of a transfiguration from Mark chapter 9. 
Our Old Testament reading is from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were travelling from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to Bethel. But Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went down together to Bethel. The group of prophets from Bethel came to Elisha and asked him, Did you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Of course I know, Elisha answered, but be quiet about it. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to Jericho. But Elisha replied again, As surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went on together to Jericho. Then the group of prophets from Jericho came to Elisha and asked him, Did you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Of course I know, Elisha answered, but be quiet about it. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to the river Jordan. But again Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went on together. Fifty men from the group of prophets also went and watched from a distance as Elijah and Elisha stopped beside the river Jordan. Then Elijah folded his cloak and to get together and to struck the water with it. The river divided and the two of them went across on dry ground. When they came to the other side, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken away? And Elisha replied, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit and become your successor. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah replied. If you see me when I am taken from you, then you will get your request. But if not, then you won't. As they were walking along and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire appeared, drawn by horses of fire. It drove between the two men, separating them, and Elijah was carried by a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha saw it and cried out, My father, my father, I see the chariots and the charioteers of Israel. And as they disappeared from sight, Elisha tore his clothes in distress. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are now going to read an account of the transfiguration, which you will find in Mark chapter 9. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James and John and led them up a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed and his clothes became dazzling white, far whiter than any earthly bleach could ever make them. Then Elisha and Moses appeared and began talking to Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it's wonderful for us to be here. Let's make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He said this because he didn't really know what else to say for they were all terrified. Their cloud overshadowed them and a voice from a cloud said, This is my dearly loved son, listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, Moses and Elijah were gone and they only saw Jesus with them. As they went back down the mountain, he told them not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from
from the dead. Well, as we think about the transfiguration today, Joy and I are going to be trying something different. Rather than a straight talk from one of us, we've been thinking of questions that occur to us about the tr transfiguration, and we're going to be having a talk about them with one another. And we hope that that might lead you to thinking about the questions in your own way at home. During the course of this discussion, you'll see a whole series of different pictures of a transfiguration. And of course, none of us can know exactly what it was like. You'll see the pictures of Peter, James and John in the foreground of both of these images. And then in the background, you've got Jesus, Moses and Elijah. More clearly in the left, on the left picture here, than on the right. How did you relate to those pictures, Joy? I found it really interesting, actually, because the idea of the in the right hand picture where the transfiguration was shown as just such a bright light that there was nothing else visible it's some, it speaks to me something of that what an amazing experience it was it blinded them virtually to everything else that was going on absolutely in the way that one uh, was almost more powerful for me because it conveyed that mystery and power of god and it also conveyed something about the fact that there was something quite indescribable about it. And actually yeah. that's, uh, that's part of um, what I think we're going to go on and look at uh, as, our, as our next thought. So I wonder if you've ever experienced something so amazing, it was impossible to describe because that's probably the nearest I can get to the transfiguration, the experience that Peter, James and John had on that, on that, at that time. You might be wondering what on earth that picture on the left has to do with this. And that is, uh, as some of you may have recognised, the Matterhorn. Uh, and on one of the first trips we did, we went up to Zermatt, which is the town just below the Matterhorn. And we went, came up in this un, through this underground railway and came onto a platform. And there silhouetted in front of us was that amazing view that you can see here. Uh, and we walked past this little village about half an hour later. It was in the 1980s. And I can, I can picture it as if, I was, as if it was yesterday. It had such a sense of wow and it spoke to me both about the wonder of the natural world and something of the glory of God. Mm. So I, I have something of a sense that, um, that actually in trying to write this down, it, you, it was a case of trying to describe the indescribable. And actually, Mark just couldn't quite do justice to uh, no more than those who told him the account could do justice to what they experienced. And I think that's very true. I mean, I had the enormous privilege of being present when Edith was born. Mm. And that even more so than my own children's birth, because you can't, as a woman, you don't tend to witness the birth of your own children. Right. It was such an indescribable experience. Um, and of course, mixed up with these experiences are all our emotions, all our feelings. And they all form part of our memory of the experience. Yeah. And quite often we can't put them into words. So I think for those of you uh, watching this from home, I wonder what your equivalent amazing experiences are. Mm -hmm. And I wonder too, whether as you think about those amazing experiences, whether they speak to you of the wonder on nature of God. 
that there's something of that that comes through for you as you think about them. So we're going to go on now and think a little bit about what actually happened in the account with some questions around that. So this, of course, is another picture. And I suppose a question that came to me as I read the passage is the one you can see on the screen. How did Peter, James and John feel when they witnessed the transfiguration? What does that picture set speak of to you, Joy? There's such, I think for them, as I think for any of us, if we were in that same experience that those three disciples were in, it'd be that a, quite a confusion of emotions. There's obviously that incredibly bright light that is coming from Jesus. They have just seen their friend who they've walked up the mountain with, chatting, presumably chatting with fairly normally, mm. being transformed into this glowing figure with clothes that Mark just fails to describe because he can't find the words for it. And these two other men appearing with him who they recognise immediately, even though they've never actually seen them physically. They know who they are. Yes, and... And, uh, you know, and that sheer wonder, confusion, fear, and I amazement think, that they must have felt at that time. I, I think so. I mean, if I look at the picture there, the, the, the disciples, to me, seem to be showing more fear. But I think there must have been an excitement and an amazement and a wonder all mixed in. As you say, there's a whole range of emotions here. And, um, uh, and again, we have yet another a, a, account, uh, a, a, yet another attempt by an artist to capture what was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you see, there's G Jesus in the centre with the two other figures. And, uh, and I think that perhaps brings us up to our next slide. There too, you've got another image. With Jesus in the centre, it's from a stained glass window. And of course, the other two figures were Elijah and Moses. I'll stop the sharing at this point. Hmm. So I suppose, why do we think Elijah and Moses were with Jesus? Well, I'm afraid this comes back to when we need to really have a bit more understanding of our Old Testament. <laughs> yes, we've been talking about this in, Which in, is, the, in the Bible course, haven't we? We have indeed. And sometimes there's a lot going on in a New Testament passage, such as Mark has written here, and Matthew, likewise Matthew's account of, or Luke's account of the Transfiguration that we can understand with our 21st century eyes. Mm. It hadn't occurred to me until I was looking at the background of this. Moses's grave was never found. Mm. And so he, like Elijah, as we heard earlier, is thought to have been took up to heaven, possibly still alive. Mm. Um, you know, and these two figures were, it was well thought of, were meant to return as a signal of the coming of the Messiah. So, wow, what is this, what is this actually saying to, to those three disciples? What is this telling them about Jesus? I'm sure they'd have also been so aware of, um, of Moses, uh, of the way in which Elijah and Moses represented the law and the prophets and thus there's something in here of in even in them being there in revealing Jesus identity of and, a, and a, something more powerful than they'd ever experienced before uh, so it, it, it is uh, no wonder this is such a significant passage uh, which mm -hmm. speaks of God's power but is also beyond our capacity to understand. 
So let's mm -hmm. go on and think about uh, how Peter reacted particularly. And again, we've got another picture to look at for this. So Peter asked Jesus if he should build sh shelters for him and for Moses and Elijah. And I sense within this, there's something about Peter wanting to capture and preserve the moment, that it was so special that, it, that he couldn't bear to let it go. It was a moment he knew he'd remember for the rest of his life. And I also, just thinking of Peter and his impetuous nature, um, he did something which I can do as well. He said the first thing that came into his head as well, I think. Mm. There's something else about oh, that, though, because some translations put the other uh, shelters as tabernacles, absolutely. and tabernacle was a place where God resided. So was Peter trying to capture God on earth? I think he was. Let's continue. And then here we've got another picture. And the voice of God came from the cloud. And if everything that hasn't happened already hasn't been enough to reveal God's presence, uh, what was said makes Jesus' identity even more clear uh, than, it, than it had been before. This is my dearly beloved son. Wow just added an extra dimension to the experience and of course God said something else and the something else uh, is perhaps one of the most important things for us to take on from this whole passage this is my son listen to him yeah. I think that's this that phrase listen to him is the pivotal part of this story it is the next question how do we hear god speak to us i think both in our discussion now joy and for those at home and it it's something for us to constantly think about what are the ways in which we hear god speak what gets in the way? What helps? And for me, it's a challenge. One of the things I'm about to say is a challenge as somebody who is rather driven at times, being still, making time yeah. to be still before God is perhaps the, t the way in which I'm aware that I can listen most deeply. It's about you. I think God's come to recognise I'm not very good at listening. <laughs> and I must admit, some of the times I've heard him speak is when I, in that moment between sleeping and waking in the middle of the night, mm. when all of a sudden something that's, I may or may not have gone to bed pondering on, suddenly becomes clear and the number of times I've had to write wake up in the night and write something down or send myself a message on my phone quickly so I don't forget this wonderful thing that God said to me that can be really important and of yeah. course the wonderful thing is is that God speaks to us in a whole series of ways there are times when when we read passages from the Bible and particular mm. verses jump out and times when we pray and actually we have a really deep sense of God saying something to us and I think another thing that can be really important is that God often speaks to us through others sometimes um, when we're not necessarily wanting to listen but something sort of smacks us around the head and sometimes actually when we're really wanting to test out what God is saying to us, and just perhaps said through one of the ways in which you've just mentioned, uh, mm. through that still small voice, and we actually approach somebody and, and need to listen to uh, the wise other Christians. 
And uh, I know that's been a really important part of, um, of my life. And indeed, particularly with responsibilities in ministry, listening to other people um, and taking time is, is key. We can't go it alone, whatever our roles. Mm. As you were saying that, I was remembering very clearly um, a lay minister of my f f last church turning to me one day and uh, when we were stood over coffee we we're just chatting and he suddenly looked at me and he said you need to be up there pointing to the front of the church <laughs> and I know I dismissed him at the time but he, he planted a seed that God certainly watered <laughs> and I think one of the questions I'd perhaps like to pose to those who are watching this at home is are the particular things that God might be saying to you, not necessarily about service in church, or that might be part no. of it, but, but about your lives uh, and about perhaps the need for a reassurance of something that you've been worrying about, um, perhaps about something that you're called to do in something totally different from the church, perhaps something you're called to say about what we should be doing as a church as we come out of this pandemic. If, this, if at any stage there are questions in your mind that are either questions for you or for us as a church, where you sense God might be saying something to you, do please speak to us so we can mm -hmm. pray and listen, because actually it's certainly not Joy and I who have all the answers. And God speaks to all of us at different times. Mm. Mm. But there's something amazing about this whole account, that the God who is so powerful that actually in the Old Testament, they spoke Lord rather than actually speaking his name, is actually there and we can speak to him as Abba Father, and we have this balance of knowing that we are God's children, loved beyond any our capacity to imagine, and yet God is more powerful and amazing than we'll ever know. Mm. So I want to leave with a final question, a final point to ponder. The disciples saw his glory. I wonder when you have been most aware of the glory of God. And I wonder what difference that has made to you. Well, thank you, John and Joy, for that interesting conversation. And I hope you found it interesting those of you watching at home. We're now going to have our next song, Great Big God, which reminds us that God is higher and deeper and wider than we can imagine and that we are all part of his amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God Our God is a great big God And He holds us in His hands Our God is a great big God Our God is a great big God Our God is a great big God And He holds us in His hands He's higher than a skyscraper He's deeper than a submarine Wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And he's known me and he's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. 
God, our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hand. Our God is a great big God, our God is a great big God, our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hand. He's higher than a skyscraper, He's deeper than a submarine. Wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And he's known me and he's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. 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 Now, please join with me in the statement of our faith. You are a great God who made a wonderful world. You are far beyond what we can ever understand. But we trust in you. You work in ways that we cannot expect. You are far beyond what we can ever understand. But we trust in you. You make yourself known to us in all sorts of ways. As we speak with you, as we read about you, as we meet with others, in our dreams and in the silence. You are far beyond what we can ever understand. But we trust in you. You know all people by their personal name all across the world. You are far beyond what we can ever understand. But we trust in you. Amen. Now David and Milo will lead us in a reflection. I asked the sun, who is your father? I asked the lightning, who put you in the sky? I ask the distant sea, who causes you to spread so far? I ask the stars, where do you end? I ask the depths of the earth, what secrets do you hold? I ask the volcano, who has awoken you? I ask the storm, what message do you have for me? They all answer, God is our beginning. He designed us and made us move. In each of us you see his glory, power and love. O oh God our Father, although we are so small and helpless, we lift our heads to you. Let us encounter your greatness, glory and majesty. We are here because you want us here. You have given us life. Show us what you want us to do and let your name be glorified in us. Amen. Let us pray. In Messy Church and in Collective Worship, we sometimes use the teaspoon prayers, TSP, saying thank you, sorry, and please to God. And so we pray. Great and wonderful God, we thank you for who you are, a mighty God who loves each one of us. You are the ruler of space and time and creator of all. And yet you love us so much that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us so that we can be reconciled to you. You are our God and we praise you. Great and wonderful God, we thank you for your church throughout the world. Please gather all those in your church to reveal your glory through our words, 
and actions. Bless all those who lead with your grace to help them fulfill their calling, giving them a vision of your purpose. You are our God and we follow you. Great and wonderful God, we thank you for the world you have made. We look with awe and wonder at your creation, but we are sad and ashamed of the way humankind is treating it. You made a perfect planet, Lord. Please give us all the desire to play our part in looking after it. You are our God and we love you. Great and wonderful God, we bring to you our world of so much pain, so much need and sorrow. A world you care about so deeply. In the midst of the global pandemic, we ask for your transforming love to be close to those who are suffering through COVID-19 in so many ways, through illness, through grief, through economic uncertainty or despair, through separation from loved ones, through stress caused by the current restrictions, or many other reasons. We also ask you, Lord, to heal those suffering in other ways, and we thank you for answered prayers. In a moment of silence, let us bring before God those on our hearts today. You are our God and we pray to you. Great and wonderful God, we rejoice in your power and in the resurrection. We thank you for the lives of those recently departed this life who are now resting in your glory. Remembering especially today, Roy Forsey, Brian Hill, Andre Craddock and Muriel Gover. Please comfort those who mourn with the knowledge of your everlasting love. You are our God and we trust you. Great and wonderful God, thank you for loving us. Sorry for the times we don't love you as we should. Please transform our darkness with your light. You are our God and we praise you. Merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our final hymn is how great thou art, then sings my soul, my saviour God to thee, how great thou art. Do join in with this wonderful hymn.
We're very near the end of our service, so I'd like to thank Anne and Joy for sharing in leading it with me, the Shellam and Bailey families for our readings, and James for editing the service so that you can see it on YouTube. And thank you too to all of you who are watching and worshipping with us, whether you live in the canal side parishes or further away. This week we begin Lent and on Monday there is an opportunity to watch the film which is going to be the basis for our Lent course this year, The Theory of Everything. We're going to be watching it uh, on Monday evening beginning at seven o'clock. If you'd like to know more there'll be details in Canal Side News. You probably will have had that emailed to you if you're not on our email list, do contact Michael Gamble, whose details you'll see on the closing slide, and he can get it to you. On Wednesday, we are marking Ash Wednesday with two services. Firstly, a communion service at 10 o'clock via Zoom, and then in the evening at 7.30, we are having a more reflective service. That also is using Zoom, and the details uh, will, be de will be clear from Canal Side News. We can't mark foreheads with ash as a sign of penitence in our usual way this year, so we're going to be uh, having that part of the service in a somewhat more creative way. Joy has marked stones with an ash cross, and Anne is going to show one of those to you now. They're available in our church porches, at all of our churches, so do come and take one. But if you're not able to come along and get one, do let Joy or me know and we will make sure we get one to you. All our other notices of the week are also in Canal Side News. And so we finish now with a prayer and a blessing. Now all glory to God, who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. All glory to him, who alone is God, our Saviour, through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory, majesty, power and authority are his before all time and in the present and beyond all time. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you today, throughout this Lent and forevermore. Amen. God.